Welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Our channel is all about helping you learn how to do things yourself to save money. And today, we're going to be talking about a hot water heater and something that you can do to save yourself money. Most people can do this themselves and save themselves from hiring a plumber to come do it for them. We're going to flush our hot water heater. Now, the manufacturers recommend you flush your water heater at least once a year. Um, but at least do it frequently. And uh, we've got Bella over here. She's going to help us a little bit, probably. But uh, in my case, mine's electric. Uh, I did cut off the breaker to my hot water heater early this morning. I've run a couple of loads of clothes since then. So I've used up the hot water that's in here. So I didn't waste it. Instead of draining that hot water out, I used it. So, uh, but you got to make sure that the hot water heater is turned off, whether it's gas or electric, make sure the heating element, whether it be gas or electric, is turned off. Because if you drain the water out of your tank, and those, whether it be gas or electric, if it's trying to heat, it'll cause problems. If it's electric, it'll burn out your elements. Now you got another maintenance problem to worry about. Uh, in my case, I've also got an electrical outlet here. I can unplug my hot water heater just right there. Uh, some people have an electric uh, uh, disconnect here for power if it's electric. Uh, but I turned off my breaker in my breaker panel earlier this morning, like I said. But it's very important that you make sure the heating out, the power is turned off to your hot water heater or your gas is turned off if you have gas. Now, um, at the bottom of your hot water heater, There'll be a spigot like this, very similar to your outside water spigots. You're going to hook a hose to that. And at this point, I'll zoom in a little closer so you can see it better. Now, the first thing you want to do is turn off the water, the cold water coming to your hot water heater. Now, in my case, I don't know who built this, but they didn't put a water cutoff here. This is the pipe coming in from my well. Uh, there's no cutoff here. There should be a valve here to turn it off. Most people will have that. Unfortunately, I don't, so I've turned off the power to my well pump. So uh, the water's turned off. I'm going to hook up my water hose here. There we go. Now we're threading on good. Snug it up. Don't try to tighten it real tight. You might damage something. And then turn the water on. And let's go see what's coming out. This is a pretty clean bucket to start with. And uh, there might have been a little bit of something left down in it. But not much. And you can see there's a little bit of sediment down there in the bottom. That's out of my water heater. And we're going to continue letting that run until it empties the water heater. Now my water heater is draining. I opened the faucet in my kitchen, which is just right over there. And uh, it likely drains slow because of that. Because you got to get air in your tank in order for that water to drain out. Now one thing you can do, this is a pressure relief valve. If you pull that lever until it sticks straight out, you'll likely start hearing it gurgling. And that's because this pressure relief valve is letting air into your tank so the water can finish draining. And in my case, I'm going to let that finish draining. Some people tell you you don't have to drain it completely. You can just flush it with the, the water on, the water pressure on to the tank. But I'm going to drain mine because it's been a long time since I've done it. At this point, my hot water heater has finished draining. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close my pressure relief valve. And I've also turned off the one hot water spigot in my kitchen that I had turned on. So at this point, I'm going to go cut my well pump back on. In most places, you could just turn on the valve to put water back in your water tank. Uh, but like I said earlier, I don't have that valve. Um, but with the tank empty, when that water starts spraying in, it's going to stir up anything that may be at the bottom. I still got this valve on, 
So it'll start draining again and hopefully it'll stir up anything that's still left in the bottom and help press it or push it on out. So now I'm going to go cut my pump on and we'll see what comes out this time. And if you look at all that white stuff floating around in the water, that's more stuff that just got stirred up at the bottom of my water heater and it's coming out in the water that's draining now. A lot of that's going to flow out of my bucket, but uh, there's a lot of crud coming out of there now that didn't come with just plain draining it. At this point, I've cut my water uh, pump off to let the pressure drop down and drain again. I cut it back on, got more sediments out, and right now I've let it run with the pump on for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to cut this off now because it's done about all it's going to do. I can unhook this. Let it suck a little air. At this point, you can hook your water heater back up. Now, like I said, I've got my breaker tripped well, so I have to reset my breaker before the water heater will actually start heating. But I'd also like to warn you that because you drain this, your water tank, your water heater tank, has a lot of air in it. So you'll need to let that air out. So when you open one of your hot water faucets in your house somewhere, you're going to get a lot of air out of it. So you need to purge that as well. And uh, you saw my bucket outside. There wasn't a whole lot of sediments in it, even though it's been quite a while since I've done this. But I can tell you a quick story. Um, I worked on a hot water heater some years ago that the people said has only been installed about a year, but they were having trouble running out of hot water. I said, well, probably you got a bad heating element. So I went out there and uh, we drained the tank. It did drain, but then we couldn't get the heating elements out. So we actually took the water heater out of the house, took it out in the backyard on the table, and started beating on it, trying to get that hot water heater element out of the tank. When we finally got it out, we started cleaning out the tank as best we could. And the reason we couldn't get the heating element out was because it had so many mineral deposits built up on that heating element. We literally filled up a, a five gallon bucket about half full of mineral deposits just out of that hot water heater. So, you know, in some places it's a really big issue, some places it's not, but it's still a good idea to drain your and flush your tank once a year. So that's how you do it. If you got any questions, just post them in the bottom. I'll do my best to answer your questions for you. And if you would, please click like and share on our videos and uh, subscribe to our channel because it really helps us grow to bring you more videos. And uh, at this point, I'd just like to say thank you for visiting, do it yourself with Wayne, and we hope you have a great day.